Junior picks a special day to finally break through. Welcome to CBSSports.com's NASCAR Report. I'm Amber Wilson. Thanks to a gutsy call by crew chief Tony Urey Jr. and a few helpful cautions to help him conserve fuel, Dale Earnhardt Jr. broke his over two-year winless drought on Father's Day, taking the checkered flag at Michigan in the LifeLock 400. He was able to somehow go the last 55 of the 200-lap oval without hitting. After leaving the company named after his late dad to join the circuit's most powerful ownership group in Hendrick Motorsports, many expected Jr. to break his drought earlier, but the popular driver was always in the mix throughout the season, sitting near the top of the standings. Seven of the 15 points races, he's been in the top five. So it looks like he'll be in the chase picture, unlike last season when he was scrapping just to get into the top 12, only to be left out. Junior remains third in the standings, 84 points behind Kyle Busch, who managed to increase his overall lead 11 points with a 13th place finish this past weekend. Casey Kane followed up his victory at Pocono with runner-up honors this week. He continues to be on a tear. He climbed two more spots to seventh overall. And we bring in our very own NASCAR expert, Pete Pistoni. And Pete, finally, Dale Jr. wins a race. As with Casey Kane, will winning bring more trips to victory lane for Jr.? Well, I can tell you, Junior Nation sure hopes that the wins keep coming for Dale Jr. I think some confidence will come out of it, Amber, but the win in Michigan was a little bit different than what Casey Kane had been doing because it came with some fuel mileage strategy. It still counts. It's still a win. But, you know, things had to kind of fall the right way for him. Casey Kane had some luck when he won three of the four weekends as well. Uh, but I think Dale Jr. would like to show some passing on the race track as well as some fuel strategy. And we're going into a stretch of races right now with, by his own admission, uh, Infinity on this week on the road course and then uh, Loud, New Hampshire, where he's not great. So maybe by the time we get to Daytona again for the uh, 4th of July weekend, uh, he can flex his muscles. But certainly the confidence and the momentum now is on the 88 team side. All right, while Dale Jr.'s win was obviously popular, it didn't erase the other headlines NASCAR had to deal with of late, including a meeting held with drivers and owners last week in Michigan. What came out of that unprecedented meeting, Pete? Well, I think you could sum that meeting up best with the headline, Shut Up and Drive. I mean, I think NASCAR did the right thing, uh, asking the teams and the owners and the drivers to maybe take some of the criticism uh, out of the public eye for the new Spring Cup car. I don't think they told them that they shouldn't speak their minds, but I did think that they did remind everybody within that garage area that there's some tough economic times going on out there, and the fans that pay good money to watch these races uh, in the stands and also on television uh, aren't really well served when the competitors are telling them just how bad the competition is. So I think that was kind of part of what came out of this. I think that the drivers realized that, but I also can tell you that they're still not happy with this car, and it's going to be a work in progress. I think you'll see changes to this car, not during the regular season, but maybe as we go into the off season. Okay, back to the track. The first of two road course races is set for Sunday out in Sonoma, California at Infineon Raceway. Last year, Juan Pablo Montoya pulled off a major upset by winning his first cup race, of course. What other road racing specialists will be in this year's field, Pete? Yeah, there's always a bunch of ringers that come in when we go to these road courses. You're right. And uh, at the top of the list this weekend is Boris Said, and I'm not so sure you could call him a ringer anymore because he's been part of the NASCAR community for, for some time. But he's going to be driving his own car, the number 60. I think he's the top of the list of the infiltrators they're gonna, gonna, that are going to come in this weekend. Brian Simo is going to be in there as well, another a guy with a lot of road racing experience. Uh, Brandon Ash. There's not as many this time in. And really, I think one of the reasons is, is that the cup regulars, a lot of them have stepped up their game. Uh, Robbie Gordon, Tony Stewart, the Richard Childress Racing Team, uh, including Jeff uh, Burton and Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon. Uh, I think all those guys have stepped up their road racing game where some of the teams don't feel the need to bring in the outsiders like they did in the past. Okay, so are we going to see a surprise winner or will a cup regular find his way to victory lane in Napa Valley on Sunday? I don't know if we're going to see an upset the uh, magnitude of what Juan Pablo pulled off a year ago. I think Juan Pablo will certainly be in the mix this year to make it back-to-back -back wins. But as I said earlier, I think some of these regulars on the Spring Cup Series are going to be there at the end and, and get the victory lane. I expect to see a regular sipping some of that nice Napa Valley champagne in victory lane. Uh, Jeff Gordon, to me, is the guy that I think really needs to win. He has had really a, an off season by his own admission here in the first 15 races. He has won so many times out there. I look for that 24 team as the team to beat this weekend out in Sears Point. All right, Pete, thanks as always. And, of course, we look forward to hearing from you this weekend from Infineon. And don't you forget to come back next week when we take a look at New Hampshire. But for now, if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. For Pete Pistoni, I'm Amber Wilson.